Hey guys, welcome back to Turntable Guy. On the bench today we have another Rhea. This time we have a Planner 2. And this one has come in for a very odd reason. Um, never had this issue before. Um, just so you can see here, this one's particularly dirty. Can't even see through the dust cover. It's so stained. Um, and the plinth is filthy. The platter is filthy. It's just a really, really dirty turntable. Um, I'm going to take the uh, dust cover off right away because we're not going to need it for the rest of this repair. And uh, I'll tell you right now, I don't think we're going to be able to repair this. Uh, this one has come in for quote unquote girlfriend damage. So I guess this guy had a uh, argument with his girlfriend and she decided it to, uh, to take it out on his turntable. Um, she supposedly grabbed the arm and cranked it. Uh, he says that the arm will no longer go past this point. And uh, I can confirm that. If we grab the tone arm and move it forward, it stops right there. But one thing of interest is if we just put the uh, clamp down, if we move the, turn, or the uh, tone arm this way, it looks like it has full motion over there. But one thing I have noticed that I don't like is that uh, the bottom bearing looks like it might have been damaged or snapped because this tone arm should not, not be doing this. So let's have a look at it. This is the RB220 tone arm. This is the one with the fixed anti-skating. Um, Riga has uh, subsequently come out with a new RB220 that actually has adjustable uh, anti-skating. Um, personally, I, if you've watched any of my videos, uh, you can check out uh, my video on my own personal P1 uh, planner one uh, with my RB110 and I uh, do a hack on the arm to make it adjustable anti-skating. This is the dumbest idea that this turntable company has ever done, is to fix their anti-skating for the uh, Rega Carbon slash AT36 uh, uh, cartridge. Because if you do want to change the cartridge and you want to use a lighter tracking cartridge, you're going to have too much anti-skating because it's set up for about 2.5 grams of tracking force. Anyway, enough on that subject. Let's have a look at this arm. We'll take a look to see what the damage actually is. And is there any possible way that we can repair it? Once again, if we move the arm this way, it's stuck, but it is moving in this direction. So I don't know what we're going to find here. I think she snapped the bearing. We'll see. Anyway, let's remove our platter. And that is the difference between the uh, P1 and the uh, P2. You get a slightly thicker plinth, same sub bearing, same motor. RB220 arm instead of RB110 arm uh, and you get the glass platter. Other than that, turntables are identical. Okay, so what we're going to want to do here, I think we can leave the sub platter in and the gentleman said if I do happen to fix the arm he would like the turntable serviced. So um, you can see that the uh, it looks like the glass platter has been dropped on the plinth here because it's all scratched and there's tons of fingerprints. So, it's a shame actually. Okay, so how's our vision? We're going to remove the uh, RB220. Uh, we'll take our stylus off. No need to damage that. And uh, you're going to need a Torx driver to do this. And I believe it's a Torx 25. No, Torx 15. I believe. And there should be three screws holding it down to the plant. It's really easy to remove. Torx 15. Yes. We have three screws. They are kind of tight because they go right into the MDF or whatever the uh, turntable is made out of. There's your Torx screw. Uh, to get at this one, you need to move the arm over. Hopefully it's not... Mm. 
Well, that's no good. I'm gonna have a problem here because the arm's not moving all the way over. Let's see if I can get it on an angle. Yeah, I can get it there. Look how, look how beat up this is. That arm should not be doing that. The final screw's at the back and it's best to take off the counterweight. Now, I know Rega does sell tone arms, but I don't know, do they sell the RB220? I have no clue. That might be what he needs to do here. And finally, you just need to remove this one screw on the bottom, which holds the, uh, the cable in, and that one's a Phillips. I'm holding the tone arm as I do this so it doesn't bang on the uh, on my desk. Okay. Now, you should be able to just pull this arm out. The cables will come with it. And then we can put the uh, turntable aside, the actual plinth. we can work on the arm. All right, this will give us a much better view. I don't know why these cables are off here of what's going on here. So that's about as close up as I'm going to get here. Oh dear. Now, I, this was not on my desk earlier. This looks totally crank. Oh, this is going to be bad. There's that magnet, by the way. I'll show you that. There's the uh, the adjustable or the automatic tracking. So there's our range of motion right now there and there. So the question is, what has happened in here? We're going to have to dig a little deeper. So it got nothing to do with the upper. Okay, I'll tell you that right now. Um, the upper part of the arm, here's your side bearings here, your up and down bearings, right? So they're there, and uh, they just attach to the arm. Now what you can do is you can pull these off and you can get out the actual screws right there if you hear like a watery noise in the background uh, that's the old sump pump going at it again I'm gonna loosen these top bearings I usually do not recommend playing with the bearings the arm bearings of a tone arm they're usually adjusted at the factory and you really don't want to mess with that but this tone arm is pro quite possibly shot so and these two chunks of metal here three chunks make it they're not a good sign Okay, I'm just going to continue to loosen these. And there's one. There's two. Now the arm will come out. 
I have to be very careful because the tone arm wiring, wiring is in there. Here's your tone arm, tone arm wiring. So there's four wires and a ground. So just a solid slender piece of aluminum tube. The damage is undoubtedly underneath. And uh, whoops, this is not, this is, this is bad. That does not feel smooth whatsoever. The uh, bottom bearing is undoubtedly destroyed. Okay, let's continue the tear down here. There's one nut here that holds the connection board for the tone arm wiring. You just need to loosen it and you'll be able to pull this out like that and you'll see it'll pull the wiring down okay and there's your main connection board so as you can see the black wire connects to the left ground so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark these pads I'm gonna disconnect the wires here so I can get a look inside because there is a nut up there so I'm gonna disconnect this but before I do that I'm gonna mark all these pads okay I will uh, I'm gonna do that with a, with a sharpie I'll be right back so instead of uh, marking, can you see that? There's a lot of glare. Instead of marking the actual uh, board, I've just done a drawing here. Um, that's the way it looks. So we got green, blue and black, white and red, and there's that little like uh, copper pad there. We'll just mark that, and there's the screw for the uh, for the clamp there. So we'll just follow this when we put it back together. So what we're gonna do. This is very delicate work. If you don't feel comfortable soldering, especially wires this thin, then I do not recommend doing this. So we're just gonna grab each wire and we're just going to touch the pad. Just make sure my iron's hot enough. See that okay? Okay. All right, so our RCA cables are disconnected. There's, I'm going to clean up this when I uh, put them back on, if I can put it back on. Um, so there's our RCA cables. There's the pad. And if we turn around this way, red, white, green, blue and black all right so now we should be able to pull our arm all the way through with our wiring and 
as it should be. There is a nut down there. I don't know what size it is, but I have a feeling that maybe we're okay. Maybe I can loosen that. They're in the bin. Here they are. Question is, what size is this? Mm. That's an eleven thirty seconds. It feels a little big. That's right on. We've got a uh, five sixteenths. We're just going to loosen that. The whole arm wants to turn while I'm doing that. Can I loosen it? That's the question. <clears throat> There's our nut. It's got some kind of um, thread locker on it. It's a very fine thread. Yeah, will this come out? Still doesn't want to come out. Hmm. So if that is straight, right there, that's the magnet pulling on it. That's the anti-skating right now. That's why it's pulling back. I'll show you how you remove the magnet, by the way. Just grab a, uh, first of all, you want to mark the outside of it. Because this, this magnet is in way too deep. You want to grab that. And you want to give it a tug with a pair of pliers. If you can get it, it is a bit of a pain. Because it's glued in place. But I think this one's actually shifted inwards. Get a good grip on it. Nope. Let me uh, let me work on that a little bit. Um, so I'm not fumbling around here. I got to get a better pair of pliers. I'll be right back. I got about fifteen thousand pliers down here. I'm not getting that magnet out. I will get it out. But uh, anyway, I want to show you the bearing so this part here will come out and then you can actually look at what's happened oh and there is your damage this arm is finished you can see all the ball bearings in there they're all loose here they are they've probably lost all of them um, there are what one, two, well, maybe not one, two, three. Looks like there's five. One, there's four here. Tiny little ball bearings. It could have been that the uh,
This is a shame. One, two, there's no more. And one kind of definitely broken out with this broken metal here. It's aluminum. You can't have no ball bearings. I don't know if I have any in stock that are this small, but the problem is if I put it back in there, what's to keep them from falling out again? And so that goes in there. That holds the bearings in place. And they run in that little race right there. They run in that race. Well, it's a damn shame. I don't like uh, admitting defeat, but um, with all these broken pieces here, And the bearings would run right in here. Oops. Oh, there's the fifth bearing. Hang on. Okay, so we've got our five bearings. The question is, will they stay in place once I put them back, or is that damaged too much? And what is the what are these pieces of plastic or or aluminum? No, they're aluminum. These pieces of aluminum here, where did they go? The iron's been reefed, right? So, okay, let me continue to look at this. I'm just gonna dig around a little bit more. I don't want to bore you to tears. Um, I mean, at the very least, you saw how you take apart a uh, RB220 tone arm. Um, it's not rocket science, it's not hard to do. It's just a matter of getting this cap off and getting your big nut out from here after you desolder your water, wires and removing your two side bearings. They have a little bit of uh, thread locker on them as well. So uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to play with it a little bit um, and uh, I'll come back. I'm actually going to stop this. I might come back at a later date um, and let you know where I'm at. Here's an update for you. This little plate here that's inside, that kind of uh, rhombus shaped plate, the aluminum one there with that black dot. It looks like it was moved out of position because if we kind of straighten out and put this arm where it would be if it normally played, which would be right, oops, I got it backwards, right there. Okay. When she reefed on this, so that would be the straight position right there. When she reefed on that, she moved that plate where it was touching one of those two bolt holes there. So, if you look now, if I uh, turn this, I am getting that movement now, right? So, can this be repaired just by moving this plate? Because that's what I think's happened. It's a press fit. So, that's straight, right? So now if you look, if I move this, never mind the arm, if I move this, I'm getting the distance now that I want, right? That's almost, I mean, you can move it even more. And it's just a matter of um, turning this a little bit like this. Just like that. And now we've got the movement, I think. Record won't go that far. So that's our little rubber bumper here for the wires. I'm trying to be really careful not to tear these wires. I really don't want to have to reseat them within that little hole. So let me uh, let me continue playing. That's where I'm at. Um, and then if I get this where I want it to be, I'm going to try and press those uh, bearings back into place. Um, the damage is underneath that uh, that uh, metal plate there. That's where the uh, damage occurred. So I don't think it has anything to do with the actual bearings. So 
let's uh, let's keep playing here. I'll be back. So I think I'm satisfied with um, my repair here. I just want to show you what I'm trying to do here. This is going to take me a very long time. So I put a ball bearing in a tweezer, and then I have to rest the ball bearing, which are pressed into those little notches on that black piece in there. There's five of them. I've got the five ball bearings. I'm going to try to do this. Um, this could take a long time. So I'm uh, going to do that. <laughs> I'll let you know if it works. And then I have to get this over it like this without the ball bearings falling out of that, uh, those little slots. And hopefully that works. I'll let you know. Okay. I have put the five little ball bearings in their respective spots. Now, they will not stay in those spots on their own. You can't press fit them in. As soon as you try to squeeze them in a position, they go flying around. And if I lose one of these, it's game over. What I've done is I put a little dab of synthetic grease on each pad where they're supposed to go into. And that's holding the ball bearings in place. I mean, I couldn't even pick them up with a magnetic screwdriver because they're stainless steel. So they, they won't uh, stick to a magnet. So they are in their five positions. So they're kind of like in a, in a pentagon shape there. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to try and press fit this piece over it. Now, this is the bearing race. They ride in that first top groove. So hopefully when I push this down, they don't go shooting out, right? So I'll, I'll do this on camera. I'll do this live. Let's see if we get a good, uh, a good fit here. One in. I don't feel any real drag on the arm. We've got our positioning done. So straight, and that's how much movement we have now, which is more than enough for a record. Uh, something else I want to show you is I did manage to get that magnet pulled out. It was all the way in. Um, that's roughly where it needs to be right there. Okay, so I've left it. Um, okay, so really all we need to do now is we need to put our nut back on and uh, then get our wires fed through. So let's zoom in again. put our nut back on. Now I have no idea if this is going to work right. Like I said, um, I've never done this before. I don't know if it's, you know, if it's gone too far now, if it's just sustained too much damage. But at the very least, I think it might be okay. And uh, definitely better than it was, but I don't know if it's affected the uh, playability of this arm. This is not wanting to screw on. It's very, very fine thread. But I cannot remove this piece again. If I do, all the little ball bearings will go flying. Uh, let's see here. I can just catch a couple threads. Should be all right, but it's very tight space in here. Uh, 
I think I got it. Yep. Kind of like a spark plug, right? You don't want to cross thread it. There we go. We're going in. And I'm not sure how tight it needs to be. Does that affect the... So you can see how it uh, affects this, right? It seems like it's too tight. Hmm. I might have put that screw in backwards. One side is concave and one side's not. Let me try this way. Okay, I'm going to pause again. I don't want to bore you to tears, but uh, we're just trying to get that nut back on, and I shall return. Okay, I got it on, and it looks like we got good free movement here. Our bearings are intact, because when I push down on here, I get nice motion. Got no slop, which is good. So, and we've got, look at that, eh? we've got nice motion. No slop anymore. So now, and uh, I know that grease is not supposed to be there, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident that it's not going to affect the performance. It's just a synthetic grease. It's not like I, I used a ton of it, but it's the only thing I had to hold those bearings, those little ball bearings in place while I put that on top. It's just no other way to do it. So now, this is the fun part. I'm going to have to refish all our tone arm wire through here, all the way through, and reattach our RCA cable, okay? Um, you saw how I removed them. That's how I'm gonna put them back on. I'm gonna pause while I do this. I'm gonna solder these back on, and uh, I'm gonna button up this uh, arm and go from there. So if you're re rewiring your Rega tone arm, a great way to pull your four or five wires through this tiny little hole is to attach a wire. What I did is I put a little bit of heat shrink on the end there and stuck the uh, tone arm wires within the heat shrink as well. Then heat shrinked it down and now you can pull all your wires through without any issue. And I'll go in do it gently though. And we'll pull those wires all the way through. And we'll keep coming. And then you can attach your bearing back on. And uh, we'll come out this side. And there they are. So there's your wires. All the way through. And we'll continue on putting this tone arm together. Okay, so here's where we're at. Got our wiring through. We got our bearings back on, top and bottom. We've got nice motion, left to right, up and down. Our bearings are taut. There's no slop over here anymore. So, we are ready to remount this arm back in the turntable. Uh, before I do that, I am going to reinstall the uh, audio cables, obviously. Um, luckily, I, I removed the cartridge because um, it was banging around a little bit. It's just your standard AT3600, uh, quote-unquote, Rega Carbon. Uh, nothing special there. Uh, so we'll remount that. But uh, I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get these wires soldered back on and uh, then remount our arm. I think we've got a success here. All right, we're getting uh, set up for some soldering here. So, got our wires here, and I've got the uh, RCA cable plug here. Just put into my helping hands. So I got uh, 
something stable here to solder onto. We have our uh, drawing here of uh, how the wires go. So I'll get soldering those and I'll be back. You guys remember how this, uh, get rid of my Windex here, how this uh, plinth looked before? Well, I gave it a little coat of uh, some uh, carnauba wax. I mean, it's still got some scratches here and there, but uh, definitely got the shine back. At least it looks semi presentable now. It's almost like mirror image. Um, just to clean it up a little bit, it's just looking like hell. I thought, ah, what the hell, I'll try to polish it up a little bit, make it look nice. I'm not going to do the lid because that is a huge job. You can check out my video on how to restore a dust cover. Um, but I won't be doing that, not that one. But I thought just to clean the plinth off and give it a little bit of a, a wax job, it turned out nice and shiny. So we're all back together. Um, it didn't come with a platter mat, so I just threw on something that I had. Um, I serviced the main bearing and I cleaned the belt. And uh, like I mentioned, I gave the uh, the plinth a cleaning. I also cleaned the, uh, the glass platter. It was filthy as well. So I'm going to throw a record on and see how it tracks. But uh, before we do that, I forgot to do one thing, and that was to set the tracking points. The uh, arm lift is broken right off as well. I did align the cartridge, by the way. Isn't that hilarious? 2.22. I like to track this Rega carbon at 2.25 actually. Let's give it a little bit more. Two point two six. Close enough. All right. So before I even put the record on, I just want to say that. Uh, is this arm perfect? I don't think so. Um, I think it's damaged. Uh, I think it took a one hell of a crack. Um, the broken pieces that we found on the workbench were proof enough that it has been damaged. Have I got it back to where I think it'll track a record? I think so. Let's find out. I didn't like what it was doing at the beginning. I feel just a little bit of stiffness. It does seem to be tracking. Uh, there was a little bit of skipping there at the beginning. feels just ever so slightly stiff you know the play has gone and there's no up down play those bearings are good but that side to side bearing that was reefed on I don't think it'll ever be the same 
Um, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, 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 I don't want to say that this was a complete success because obviously it's not. Um, but is it better than when it came in? Absolutely. Uh, the lesson here, uh, don't let your girlfriend reef on your arm if you get in an argument. You know, jump in front of your turntable, of all things, protect it. Uh, <laughs> it's too bad. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice table. It's a nice sounding table. Uh, I think it's, again, overpriced for what you get, but um, they do sound very good. So I got to say this one's probably a half and half repair. I think, I think we did a, a, a good job at getting in there, taking it apart, looking at the problem, trying to solve the problem. Did we solve it 100%? Mm, I don't think so. I think there was damage that cannot be repaired. Obviously, probably the best thing to do here is to buy a new tone arm. Uh, and I'll explain that to the customer, uh, but he's probably his best bet. He's getting this for 200 bucks, okay? So that's a good deal considering that these sell for like $1,100 Canadian, I believe. So that's a not a bad deal. Um, you know, you get you get pretty much the full guts of, of, of the table. How much is a tone arm worth? That I don't know. So we'll see what he wants to do with that. But our uh, work is done here. Um, I hope you found that interesting. It was definitely uh, different. I, I have not had um, to go that deep into a tone arm before. Uh, wasn't successful, I don't think, but uh, still, it's a, it's a lesson learned, and uh, if anything, it'll uh, it'll teach me how to uh, rewire a Rega tone arm if I ever have to do that. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in again. I hope you found that interesting, and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye.